My name is Shane Mays, and I'm an elder here at St. Andrews. I welcome you to this service of worship. Fathers, grandfathers, uncles, or role models can have a positive impact on our families and the world. We offer up our prayers, our respect, and our love. We set apart this day to thank the men of faith who have had positive influences on our lives. Monday, June 21st is National Indigenous Peoples Day. This is a day for all Canadians to recognize and celebrate the unique heritage, diverse cultures, and outstanding contributions of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. The Presbyterian Church in Canada acknowledged the responsibility that our church, governments, and all Canadians have to continue working for healing and justice with Indigenous people. Presbyterians sharing support nine ministries that operate in and with Indigenous communities in Canada. These ministries meet physical and spiritual needs by providing meals, counselling, temporary housing, and employment assistance. They also strive to heal hearts through art and music therapy, worship services that incorporate Indigenous beliefs, and more. The announcements appearing now on the screen will be displayed again at the end of the service for you to make note of those pertaining to you or your friends and family. The communion at home will be next Sunday, the 27th of June, and it will be online, and you should have crackers or bread and a drink of grape juice or other drink to celebrate remembering his sacrifice. Uh, we want to acknowledge that Jean Troop, a member of our congregation, celebrated her 99 years uh, birthday, um, and we uh, wish her well for the coming years ahead. The gift card fundraiser continues. This is one of our major fundraisers, and you can continue to support this by buying your cards through the church office. The would also like to invite you to the Come to the Circle Fellowship Time which is held on the side lawn of the church here at 1.30 p.m. every Sunday. This is a great time to uh, see people physically distanced but uh, close with their hearts.
what have we to fear? In the darkness and terror, God is with us. Of whom shall we be afraid? Rise up, people of God, for you are loved and saved. Thanks be to God who cares deeply for us. Amen. Love us. 
Good morning, everybody. I have a little bit of a silly question for you this morning. How many of you watching are human? I'm gonna go ahead and assume everybody who is watching this morning is human. And if we're all human here, which I'm pretty sure we are, we're gonna struggle with being scared. You could be afraid of the dark, being, be afraid of being alone, you could be afraid of clowns, bugs, something happening to somebody you love. When I was younger, I used to be terrified of the dark, and I would always sleep with not just the nightlight on, but an actual lamp. Did you know that there are literally hundreds of things to be afraid of? For example, some people have what is called acerophobia, which is the fear of foods being sour. Others have something called catoptrophobia, which is not the fear of cats, but the fear of mirrors. Then there is arachnophobia, which is the fear of spiders. Still, others are afraid of chopsticks, numbers, and even certain fabrics. These may sound like silly, small fears to us, but to some people, these fears are real and big. God knew that we would be a people who struggle with fear. He knew that in our world, darkened by sin, which is just the bad decisions we make sometimes, there would be many things to be afraid of. If you search in the Bible, the word fear is mentioned 326 times. Over and over again, God says, do not be afraid. In the Bible, there is a story about a giant warrior called Goliath, who most people were afraid of. But one person, one boy actually, was brave enough to fight and defeat the Goliath. This boy was much smaller than the giant warrior, and he didn't have any fancy weapons to fight the giant with. So how did he win? He was strengthened by God. What an awesome example that no matter what our fears may be, how big or small, God can help us overcome them. Let's thank God right now for helping us overcome our fears. Dear God, thank you for protecting us and giving us the strength to protect ourselves. Thank you for helping us to not be afraid. No matter how big or scary something is, your love is stronger and bigger. In your name we pray, amen. And now I have a little surprise for Father's Day, and so please enjoy the following video. Right things. And the one thing I really like about that is that he lets me stay up late and eat chocolate. <laughs> I love Daddy because I couldn't have been born without him. I love Daddy because he's the best and he does a lot of work for the family. And my favorite thing, most favorite thing about him is that he always comforts us and makes us feel better. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day, Day, Daddy! Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Hey Dad, I just want to say Happy Father's Day and thank you for being a rock and great role model for me and Jaden. We love you so much. My father is God's strength. He protects our household from evil, driven by his will to keep us safe. My dad is the rock that keeps this family strong. He instructs us to be the best version of ourselves. Strong and determined, my father cares for me. His love is true, his compassion warm. Always making us laugh and steering us the right direction. He implements God's words in our daily lives to ensure we never lose sight trying his best at all times to encourage us to live a future in which my sister and I can be proud of. I'm glad you're my dad to help me see clearly, and I'll always love you dearly. Happy Father's Day. Our first reading is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 to 49. David said to Saul, 
Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that the, all this assembly will know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. Today's responsive psalm is Psalm 9, verses 9 to 20. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death. So that I may recount all your praises, and in the gates of daughter Zion rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they hid as their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. 
The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. The Gospel reading is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O God our rock and redeemer. Amen. So how does 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight, speak to you? How would you be able to explain this verse to someone? Have you experienced a time or two in your life where you have put your complete faith in God and followed him? How did that turn out? I'm sure we have a few stories we would like to share. I can say the young boy David, in our reading from 1 Samuel, epitomizes this very verse. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I would like to share with you as well four insights of this verse and reflect on them in light of our readings for today. First, it is only through faith that we can see the impossible become possible. The epic story of young David defeating the giant powerful Goliath is a proof of David's fervent faith in God. As soon as David arrived to the camp, he saw and heard the soldiers of Saul running down to the battle line, shouting the war cry. But noticed, these grown-up men all of a sudden stopped in their tracks, trembling in fear. As David was walking down to the battle line, he overheard soldiers talking about the big of defeating Goliath. Can you picture David confidently walking by the soldiers and perhaps leaning over to their shoulders to put his two cents worth, saying to them, Who is this heathen, Philistine, to defy the army of the loving God? There is almost a sense 
they woke him up perhaps suggest that they did not put their complete trust in him as the Son of God. They did not truly believe that Jesus was God in flesh. We know that the disciples were accustomed to the rough waters as they were fishermen. It was their livelihood to spend great amount of time in the sea. In our reading for today, in Mark verse 41, it reads, And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They were filled with great awe. In the King James translation, it reads, They feared exceedingly. In the NIV translation, it reads, They were terrified. Other translation puts it, they were filled with great fear, or more afraid than ever. The disciples needed to face their fears in order to truly see and believe who Jesus was. The disciples were terrified, not when the storm was swamping the boat, but after Jesus rebuked both the wind and the disciples. Jesus said to the sea, Peace, be still. And to the disciples, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? It was only when the disciples stepped out in faith that they truly believed. Likewise, it was only when David, the young shepherd, confronted the giant Goliath face to face, saying something along the lines of, those are some pretty fancy weapons you've got there, mister. But I've got something far better than your weapons. You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Lastly, when we live by faith, our lives become a testimony God's almighty power. Walter Bergman, a biblical scholar, has this to say about David's victory. The purpose of David's victory is not simply to save Israel or to defeat the Philistines. The purpose is the glorification of God in the eyes of the world. The intent of the encounter is to make clear, yet again, that God saves not with the conventions of human welfare, but God's own indestructible ways. Yes, friends, God called on the young boy David, the youngest of eight boys of Jesse, a shepherd. David defeated Goliath using only his sling and five smooth stones. David, you see, is so assured of God's power of deliverance and God's presence 24-7, throughout his life, whether in the open field bat battling lions and bears or on the battlefield fighting a long-time professional trained warrior. The living God enabled David to defeat the giant Goliath. David proclaims not only to Goliath, but to everyone at that time that was standing there in disbelief that this battle is the Lord. Verse 46 says, To show all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into 
are faced in times of trial. In our own stormy days of suffering and hardship, we look to God to protect us and believe that God is with us. And as we look back, we can say, yes, yes, God has delivered us from the storm. God has defeated our battle from our personal demons. And now we are witnesses to others to show them that our faith has grown in confidence because we believe that God is in control and we can trust in him. In the words of Christopher Young, he says, God's faithfulness is proved not by the elimination of hardship, but by caring, carrying us through them. So let us be encouraged once again this morning to continue to walk in faith and not by sight. In closing, I would like to read to you from Max Lucado's You Are Never Alone. Bill Ernst was not the first person ever to walk the Appalachian Trail. He was not the only individual to begin in Springer Mountain, Georgia, and conclude on Mount Katahdin, Maine. Other adventures and souls have hiked the 2,100 miles, endured the snow and heat and rain, slept on the ground, crossed the stream, and shivered in the cold. But Bill Irwin was not the first to accomplish but he was the first in this respect. He was blind when he did it. He was 50 years old when, in 1990, he set out on the hike. A recovering alcoholic and committed Christian, he memorized 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and made it his mantra. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And that is, did not use Max GPS for a compass. It was just Irwin, his German shepherd, and the rugged terrain of the mountains. He estimated that he fell 5,000 times, which translates into an average of 20 times a day for eight months. He battled hypothermia, cracked his ribs, and skinned his knees and hands more times than he could count. But he made it. He made the long walk by Friends, you are doing the same. Probably not on the trails of the Appalachians, but in the trail of life. No, you are walking on a road even steeper and longer. The path between offered prayer and answered prayer. Between supplication and celebration. Between bent knees and lifted hands. Between tears of fear and tears of joy. Between help me, Lord, and thank you, Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now.